Exercise 17. In this exercise, we take a look at ProEngineer's sheet metal fabrication tools. In the past, in the previous lecture, we actually looked at uh, one of the functionalities of transitioning a shelled solid model into a sheet metal part. In this case, we take a look at just building a sheet metal part from scratch uh, with using thin features instead, and drawing profile, extruding it, and then adding a flange and some holes, and then folding it, flattening it, folding it back up. So let us begin. We'll start with a new part file. And in this case, you're going to select sheet metal under subtype. And go ahead and call this E17. And hit OK. Alright, now what I'm going to do is select the sketch tool and start a sketch on the front plane. And then we're going to proceed to draw this sketch that we see here. Let me zoom up to it. Okay, it's basically off of the center, we're going to go with a 5 inch horizontal line, a 4 inch vertical line, and an angled line at 115 degrees that's 4 inches long. So take the line tool, zoom up to this area, click and drag out a short little line that's horizontal, click again, draw a short vertical line, and a line at a slight angle. The middle click. Middle click two times, and then you'll see the dimensions appear, and here you could start adjusting them. So this is going to be 115 degrees for the angle, This is going to be uh, actually five inches. This will be four inches. And then we just need to flip this over again. And actually, let me delete that dimension, and it will bring back the proper angle that we needed. Could just select it and hit delete. Okay, and then this dimension needs to be four inches but parallel. So I go to the dimension tool, select the line, and middle click two times, and then double click on it. And then we just go ahead and type in four. And there it is. Oh, forgot this one. All right, at this point, the next step is we could go and select the um, sheet metal tool for extrude, and then we're going to go ahead and plug in the, uh, the parameters as shown here. So we go and hit done, go to extrude, and we could see it's creating a thin feature here. And the thickness that we're going to give this is going to be five inches. Actually, the the depth is going to be 5 inches, and the thickness is going to be 0 0.062. So we type in 5 there, and then actually, this is a surface right now, we can see as extrude as surface, make sure you select extrude as solid, and that gives it the thickness. And over here we could type in 0 0.062. Now under placement, uh, actually under options, there's different options in here. Uh, we could go ahead and under sheet metal options, we could um, select the depth. Well, that's what we're seeing here. Uh, there's also add bends on sharp edges, and we could put in some parameters. And over here we see the bend radius is going to be 0.09 on the inside. Okay. There's also the bend allowance information. We could use, we could click a uh, select a specific feature setup. In this case, we'll go with the K factor at 0.32, which is a pretty standard uh, one that's used in many, uh, many companies. But everyone has their own standards, so it might not be yours. Just be aware of that. Okay, and finally, we could go ahead and just hit Apply. And you can see it's put bends inside here. 
Right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a flange. And if we're looking at the book here, we're going to go ahead and add a flange and put in these parameters. 1.5 offset from either edge, and it's going to be uh, 0.06 for the inside bend radius. So we go over here to the flange tool, select the edge, and we could see it's starting to put it in. We could drag these little buttons here, and it will actually snap to 1.5. If not, go ahead and type in the explicit value. But now we have to flip it. <coughs> and the, the best way to flip it is we go to profile. And in this case, we get to put in the parameter. And, um, and, and what we need to do is it needs to be one inch long, but going in the opposite direction. So here I'm going to go ahead and type in minus one and hit enter. And you can see it updated. All right, again, there's options for relief. Uh, as we saw in the previous um, exercise from the last class, if you've taken that, uh, we have bend relief or corner relief. In this case, we have rip, which basically gives it a uh, as if as if it actually was never there were no relief cuts put into it. Uh, in some industries, like for example the food service industry or medical, that's uh, a pretty much a standard, but it is can be more difficult than using rectangular or oblong. So if we go with Abron, you can see it actually puts in an Abron cut here. And if we go with rectangular, it just squares it off. So in this case, we'll go with uh, I'm going to go with Abron. And you can have it up to bend or tangent. And just how thick do you want it to be? We'll go with the default, which is basically the thickness of the sheet metal. And we could hit Apply. And it should have put it in on both sides. OK, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put a, a starter sketch on the top flange that's at that 115 degree angle and put in two through holes. And they're spaced uh, one inch off of either side, four inches, uh, actually, this one's spaced four inches off of this edge, and 0.75 from the front edge. and the Diameter is 0.75 for both. So we could select Sketch, start it on that face, hit the Sketch button, and proceed to select some references. And now draw the circles. So I'll draw a circle there and there. Make them equal. The R1 will pop up to let you know that both of those are the same diameter. They're going to be 0.75. We'll change this to 4. This will be 1. And this will be 0.75. Again, it's not a bad idea to lay them out like you'd like how you'd like it to be seen on a drawing, because later on you can bring these up. And now we just go to Done, Extrude. We want to flip the cut. And we could go ahead and just hit Done. Okay, at this point we're going to use the unbend tool, which allows us to unbend just individual bends by themselves. As you can see, there's a series of bends in here. There's one, two, three, at least three that are there. We could bend, unbend it all at one time as well, but we'll wait till the last step to do that. So here's what we can do. We could go ahead and you could find the uh, unbend tool right here. Select it. And the first thing it says is, uh, we could go ahead and uh, after unbend, we'll just go with a regular, hit done. And then under here, the fixed geometry is going to be this face here. And we have the option unbend select or unbend all. We just want unbend selected. So hit done. Uh, actually, we have to select the actual uh, bend here that we want to take, uh, take out of there. Hit done. And actually, I'm sorry, went too, too early there. Select that bend. Hit OK. 
and done. We'll preview it and we can see that it worked. And you could hit OK. And you can see that the holes still remain in their position. That's OK. We'll actually unbend the whole thing in just a little bit. But for right now, we want to put in a through hole right in between this bend. So we have a 3 inch diameter. It's offset to the center of 2.5 and 5 inches from the front edge. So we could select this face, start our sketch, select sketch, take the circle, and right about here somewhere, draw a nice large circle. Should be 3 inches in diameter, 2.5 for the offset, which centers it, and 5 inches. Okay, we hit done, extrude, and we want to flip it, and it automatically goes to extrude cut, so we're in good shape. Hit apply. Now we need to bend it back. And so if we go ahead and select right next to the unbend tool, if we hit the little arrow to the right of it, you'll find bend back. Again here we just have to go through the menu options for fixed geometry. We'll be this face once again. And we hit done. And then we go, we go ahead and uh, we have to select the surfaces where the bend takes place. Hit done. Preview it. Looks good. Hit OK. And it's bent back with the actual feature intact. As if it were cut and it's flat and then bent back in real life. All right, to finally finish this off, if we want to bend it completely, we go to Flat Pattern. And we could select the fixed face, and it bends the entire model. And if you look on the, the back side, you'll see the bend callouts as specified. And that finishes this exercise.